Good afternoon, good afternoon, Faculty of Social Sciences, newly minted undergrad students. Welcome, welcome everybody to the Faculty of Social Sciences virtual undergrad welcome ceremony for this afternoon. Pick up yourself, everybody in YouTube land, everybody on the Zoom. I just want to say welcome and thank you so much for joining us. I want to welcome all the staff and students and friends and family of the social sciences community. Lovely to have us all gathered here. I know we would have wanted to do it in person, but we know how the thing go. We know what we did. So we're just going to rock with it and we're going to make it shine. I want you to strap in, you know, for my students, you're going to get a lot of information today. So just get a little notepad, a little pencil, or if you want to do your virtual thing, take your phone, open your notes and just ting, ting, ting. Yes, I want to big up all my international and regional students that are in the chat out there in the YouTube land. What I want you to do for me, if you are from, um, from a country uh, that's not Jamaica, anywhere you are in the world, if you're tuning in, go ahead, put in the YouTube chat your name, where you're from, your country, and just big up yourself. And so I can see... So I can shout you out. Thank you so much for coming and sharing this wonderful, wonderful experience with us. Um, so last year, some of us may have known that the Faculty of Social Sciences celebrated its 60th year. A whole heap of years, that's enough. And we had our 60th FSS, 60th symposium and celebration. Now, listen, the thing them did awesome. All of these things were there. We had lots of events and you can actually go on YouTube on the Faculty of Social Sciences page and check out some of those things. Just quick view the videos that has reviews of all the exciting things that happened. And yes, we still did come out in the middle of the, um, in the, middle of the pandemic and you know, we had all of these wonderful virtual things. Wealth of knowledge is there for you students and us faculty and staff. And it's just an awesome, awesome time. So I just want to thank all of you guys for showing up and showing out. It's going to be a wonderful experience. No mind that it's going to be virtual, but that's okay. We can bring the vibes virtually as well as we're going to do today. So listen, the program would have been shared with you guys. It should be there. And it's going to be a lot of, lot of information, all right? But don't worry about it. Take some time. Leave the video running. If you need to go and grab something to eat, grab something to drink, some water, um, and just get the thing going and enjoy what we have for you today. Now, right? So we do have our first presenter for you, and it will be Miss Omalora Wilson. Miss Wilson, Miss what me pronounce and name right, and I'm sure I did. She will be coming to us from the UE Guild of Students. She's the Faculty of Social Sciences Guild representative. Now, all my new students, remember, this is something that you can actually become in your future years in the Faculty of Social Sciences. You can represent your faculty and be that liaison between the university, between staff, between faculty and the students. It's a very, very awesome responsibility. And I know Ms. Omolara will tell you more about it and just welcome you in general. So guys, get your little snacks, get a little apple. You know, I bought myself some Jimbelin, some star fruit for those of us who don't know what that is. And I'm here. We're going to be enjoying the wonderful presentation. So please do welcome Miss Amalora Wilson. Thank you so much. Miss, Miss Wilson, take it away. Thank you, Miss Brain. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, greetings, Massive. And, you know, as the Faculty of Social Sciences representative, it's imperative that I do a welcome to y'all, my new cubbies. We've been having our conversations in um, our little WhatsApp chat, but of course we have to do it formal as well to ensure that you guys know that we're all here for you. So no matter how this world may evolve and how some degrees will become a thing of the past, one thing is for sure is that the art of social sciences will always be needed. And social sciences is dedicated to society. We are the creators of better institutions and systems that affect people's lives 
every day. And believe me when I say to you that you have made the best choice selecting the University of the West Indies and more importantly, the Faculty of Social Sciences. I say on behalf of the Unimona Guild Council and the Social Sciences Guild Committee, welcome Tigers. Your hunt has just begun. The Tiger Street hosts the largest population in the University of the West Indies, almost half, if we're to admit it. And best believe when we say we are the massive, we are the massive. This Tigress is dubbed Omolora Wilson, and I stand in front of the street proudly roaring for your cause as a faculty of Sciences Guild Committee consists of 39 Tigers, who consists of yours truly, members of the executive, department representatives, and hall representatives who represent the Guild Council in their highest obligation, which are to place student welfare and student development at the forefront of our mandate, to be accountable and answerable to you, the Guild students, and of course, to always be the voice of advocacy and reasons on behalf of you, my Tigers. So whenever you're in doubt, just roar. We, the streak, will always be here to guide you. We also encourage you to connect with us on our socials, on Instagram and Twitter, and always feel free to message us to be added to our WhatsApp and Telegram group. A tiger represents bravery, valor, and passion, and knowledge. And all four representations can be used as characteristics across the four departments in our faculties for the personalities of our students. This faculty will become your home your grassland for the next three years. And as your faculty rep, I deem it fit to say to you that even though we are not together physically, the resources and the opportunities are there virtually. So get involved in extracurricular activities, be active in organizations, clubs, and societies, and remember how important friends and peers are during this journey. This will not be an easy hunt. There will be many days to celebrate, but also days we will be weary and we'll feel demotivated. But we are tigers and tigers never yield. Wherever we are from, be it the Caribbean, the Americas, Europe, Africa, Asia, we are the massive. We are the orange nation. We are tigers. We are one soul side. And as our motto depicts, we have a unified force, a unified faculty, and unified goals. And in unity, we will roar supreme always. We're looking forward to a tremendous year with you, Tigers. Welcome to the Faculty of Social Sciences. And I wish you all the best in this academic year as you join the Tigers on their hunt for greatness and the massive street for excellence. Thank you. All right, all right. You know, I just realized, Omalora, oh, that was you. I was at your crowning for Miss Mary C. Cole Hall. Yes, it yes, it yes. Was. listen to me, the nation, YouTube nation, Zoom nation. This queen right here is the bomb. And here she come up with a tiger speech and a tiger analogy. This is awesome because yourself, Omalora, oh, representing you, the tiger and orange nation as usual. Awesome, Thank awesome. You. Listen. The people in YouTube, you guys are coming out. I see you, Kingston, St. Elizabeth, whoop, whoop. You know, the bread basket, yes, St. James, big up on yourself. I love the participation that's going on so far. All right, all right, we're moving, we're moving. So we're going to have a presentation from Miss Tamar, Tamar, Tamarni, Tamarni, girl, come tell me your name, Tamarni Tavares who is the president, president of the Faculty of Social Sciences on a society. Now, guys, this is something that you also can be a part of. And no make the honor society fool you. You know, it's nice and vibrant and lots of fun people are in there. So we'll have that presentation and then you will see me back here for another awesome program item. All right, over to you. Dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences, Professor David Tennant, Deputy Dean, Dr. Heather Ricketts, staff of the Faculty of Social Sciences, student leaders and or matriculants, good afternoon. I am Tamarni Tavares, the president of the Faculty of Social Sciences Honor Society for the academic year 2021-2022. 
congratulations you have successfully entered a new exciting and breathtaking chapter of your life most commonly called your campus life or your university life as you embark on this mission I implore you to make the most of your student experiences, especially during the pandemic. It's going to be your first semester at the University of the West Indies online. No face-to-face -face contact with your lecturers, student leaders, your peers. How are you going to make the most of this experience? Thankfully, the university is plagued with more than just a handful of opportunities for you to enjoy, maximize, and capitalize on your student experience. I'm referring to opportunities that will not only foster holistic development, but opportunities that will enhance your social, your networking skills, opportunities that will cater to your entertainment needs, opportunities that will put you a step or even two further in your career slash professional journey. Importantly and ultimately, opportunities that will cater to your academic development. The university and the Faculty of Social Sciences ensures that the necessary resources are available to their students. It is up to us as students to utilize and make the most of these resources. I believe we as students are responsible for our student experience. There are over 100 clubs and societies here at the university. I strongly recommend get involved and be an active member. We can still have the ideal student experience. Nothing is impossible. The word itself says, I'm possible. You have made it this far. Continue to strive for excellence. Reach for the stars. There is a you you haven't met. Speaking of which, I am looking forward to seeing you all becoming newly inducted members into the Faculty of Social Sciences Honor Society coming 2022, where we live by our, myth, our motto, inspiring excellence through volunteerism. The Honor Society represents and celebrates academic excellence. Its mission is to exude the highest level of excellence and efficiently and effectively assisting students in the faculty to achieve and maintain equal levels of excellence to foster personal and holistic development. As I close, I implore you to make the most of your student experiences in spite of the challenges. You are responsible for your experiences. Your university life has just begun. Make the most, take full advantage of every opportunity as they present themselves. Do nothing less than your best at all times. And may God bless you always. Thank you. Um, awesome. Thank you so much, Tamarne, from the Honor Society, which I know that all of you are ready and willing to join and it's going to be a wonderful part of the experience now spot prize time but let me give you the rules now many of us have our very fancy names for youtube but for this listen carefully we are definitely going to need you guys to write your full government name yes please so that when you Come to us to claim the prize. We know who you are. Now, the first person in the chat to answer the question, in what year did teaching begin in the Faculty of Social Sciences at the Mona campus? Yes, please. So now ask, not tell me about St. Augustine or Sister Campus, and don't tell us about Cavill or other Sister Campus, Mona campus. In what year did teaching begin in the Faculty of Social Sciences on the Mona campus, all right? Good. So first person to write it, and you have to write your full name so that we know you and we want to give you the, want to give you the prize, you know? We want to give it away. Also, all right, so next we're gonna have a very, very, very important video, right? We are going to have our Academic Integrity FSS Anti-Cheating Campaign. Now, that video are big and a campaign are big, big, right? So the video is going to be there. It's going to be on all our social media platforms. 
our handles are at FSS UE Mona. We want you to share. We want this video to go viral because we don't play over here in the Faculty of Social Sciences. All right. So let's watch uh, this campaign as it is launched right here and enjoy it and share, share, share. And after that, you'll see me right back here. All right. Big up yourself, Tigers. Right in the chat. Let me know where we're from. Where are my international students, regional, international people? Write yourself down in the chats and let us know we're here. We want to welcome you. Awesome. This is an anti-cheating campaign brought to you by the FSS. The University of the West Indies, this prestigious institution, is ranked number one in the Caribbean, in the top 2% in Latin America, and in the world's top 4%. The Faculty of Social Sciences is the largest of all seven faculties at the UWI Mona. The FSS is renowned for its rich history of 60 plus years of scholarship and eminent graduates, including prime ministers, ministers of government, leaders within the public and private sectors, and road scholars. We also boast Olympians, including recent gold medalist in the men's 110 meter hurdles, Hansel Parchment. As is synonymous with the symbolic meaning of the tiger, our FSS brand represents strength, courage, determination, dignity, and independence. And now you, body social scientists, have been charged to add to this rich legacy. As future leaders, we will partake in the contribution of our FSS brand with integrity and pride. Go forward knowing that though you are one, you represent the entire FSS and UA. As the late Maya Angelou would say, I come as one but stand as 10,000. Do not tarnish with name. We don't have tolerance for cheating. Listen up. The UWI's assessment regulations consider cheating to be one of the most egregious acts that a student can commit. Cheating is considered to be any attempt to benefit oneself or another by deceit or fraud. It threatens to devalue the status of one's degree and by extension, the status of the university. There can be no trust that a degree means what it is supposed to when a student has obtained it by fraudulent means. So, if you have any ideas about bringing unauthorized materials in the examination, copying from your notes during an examination even when the instructions warn against this, assisting other students to copy from you or use your papers, accepting assistance from any other students or using any other students' papers, paying persons to do an exam for you, taking writings or drawings or other work to your examination. These are all considered as attempts of cheating and the UWI has robust systems to detect such acts. If you are found cheating, then this will be reported in writing to the campus registrar and you will have to face the examination committee which hears cases of examination irregularities. You will face serious sanctions. Here are some of the consequences of cheating. When you cheat, you only cheat yourself of a learning opportunity. When you cheat, you risk failing the course and having a FEI failed examination irregularity notation on your transcript, being fined heavily, or even being suspended for a period or expelled. Cheating affects your conscience and your guilt causes more stress. The more you worry about getting caught for cheating, the more this anxiety affects your performance. Cheating results in you not respecting your money and your time. You only throw away your investment when you cheat. Cheating results in you ruining your integrity, who you are as a person, and this taints your image and any other accomplishments you might have had before cheating. Imagine a potential employer seeing FEI on your transcript 
or a possible scholarship being missed because you are deemed to be dishonest and untrustworthy. Cheating does not allow you to see your true potential. It only destroys your self-esteem. Even though technology might make it easier for you to cheat, it makes it just as easy for us to discover when you cheat. Cheating does not pay. Make it your daily intention to pursue academic integrity. If something does not feel right, trust your instincts. Don't let anyone lead you down any path of destruction of your reputation. In the FSS, our focus is on honesty and excellence. Not only in attaining your grades, but also in the type of social scientist that you become and how you represent yourself and us in the classroom and beyond. We hope to inspire and foster in you standards of excellence so that you may develop and demonstrate a character that is in keeping with the expectations of the UWI graduate. Stand proudly, observe your actions and make sure that you always act with integrity, professionalism and excellence. This, this message, message is, is endorsed, endorsed by, by Now, when I hear the scary voice, when I hear the scary voice in another video, I start cheating scary. And we don't do that. Tigers don't do that, right? Guys, remember to share the video on your social media. Remember, it can be found at, at FSSUA Mona. Make sure you go follow, like, and participate in this new journey of your life. All right? Awesome. So now, my ask the question, Feast Back Prize. And people miss some answer there. From faculty and staff, you know, I mean, I even said we had some wrong answers though, right? Missing 1987, 1948, you know, 1948, 1962, 1961, 1972, all of these other years were mentioned, and none of them not right. But we do have a winner. So I want to big up. Kimal Ford, big up yourself with the correct answer of 1960. Not 61, not 62, 1960. So big up yourself, Kemal Ford, out there in the chat. You are the winner, and we will be in contact. Now, pause. I have my first international person, and I hope I didn't miss you. Um, anybody else? Crystal Moses from St. Kitts. Sis, big up yourself. How is it over there in St. Kitts? Girl, tell us something. How is it? Um, awesome, awesome to see you. It's awesome. Um, big up yourself. So, guys, we'll be moving swiftly along. So, you know, we're not here for a dead team. Now, let me tell you what's happening next. Right? In our faculty, we have one boss, one done, the big man. He is one of the most genuine and awesome persons I have ever met. One of the absolute nicest things. The head tiger in charge. Look at him screen already. Know what this look nice. <laughs> Guys, please welcome YouTube Nation. Welcome your dean, my dean, Professor David Tennant. Sir, big up yourself. Good afternoon, everyone. Sure. Deputy Dean, presenters, faculty members, colleagues, students, welcome to the faculty of social science. As you start this academic year, the world seems to be in a state of flux. As I have watched and read the international and local news over the past couple of weeks, my head has been spinning. And the images coming out of countries like Afghanistan and Haiti are unbelievable. And the statistics emanating from parts of Africa and the Caribbean are shocking. Recent headlines in the news media have read, chaos in Kabul as Taliban take power and thousands try to flee. Haiti is reeling. Earthquake survivors overwhelm hospitals in disaster hit nation. Second Nigerian Chibok girl freed seven years after abduction. Delta variant has spiked COVID-19 deaths in, Af in Africa by 80% in one month. Youth Delta's new target. High vaccine hesitancy among essential workers. 
joy, caution, as Ocho Rios welcomes Carnival Sunshine. Countries must take responsibility for climate change. Stock markets slide on cocktail awards. You know, as, as a human being, I look at these issues with a great deal of concern and empathy. But as a social scientist, I observe all that is going on in the world with a great deal of intellectual interest. There is nothing that is happening in our country or region or the world at large that is not either explained by or solved by a better and deeper understanding of how human beings behave and interact with each other. You are starting your journey as social scientists at a time when social sciences, the study of human behavior, has never been more important or exciting. And it is in this context that we welcome you to the Faculty of Social Sciences. We are a faculty in which our vision is to reach, to realize impactful research, to exceed the expectations of you, our students, to actively advocate for sustainable, inclusive development. We're committed to being caring professionals, and we seek to harness our skills through continuous improvement. You, our students, our clients, are the most important beneficiaries of this FSS REACH vision. Our mission is to create an environment in which your abilities and talents can grow and flourish. This is important to us because we need you to be satisfied clients, fulfilled graduates from our programs, proud FSS alumni who refer new students to us, and who will partner with us as alumni to grow and build this institution that we hold dear. But even more important than that, we need you to be the next generation of social scientists that will be intrigued by the societal problems that we face, inspired to dig deep and find sustainable solutions, and who will be equipped to implement those solutions in our country and across the world with integrity and with a deep concern for issues of equity, fairness, and sustainability. As you journey with us in the Faculty of Social Sciences, we want you know, we need you to be intellectually inquisitive, intrigued and inspired students. And we need you to graduate equipped with the tools required to be critical and analytical thinkers who are able to dissect problems, who are capable of understanding and appreciating the theories and tools that can be applied in different circumstances. Now, to your credit, you have already shown that your heads are in the right places. Where others have responded to the uncertainty of these COVID times by freezing and putting their plans on hold, you have responded in the best way possible. You have responded by investing in yourselves, in your capacity to forge a prosperous future, even without knowing what that future will look like. And students, this is critical, you know, because the one thing that this COVID-19 pandemic should have taught us is to not take anything for granted. What will the economies of the future look like? What are the industries and fields that will drive future growth? Where will the jobs for you be in three years when you graduate? I can hazard guesses, but I can't say that I know the answers to those questions for certain. So how can you be sure? How can you know that you have chosen the right degree or major or even faculty when the future is so uncertain? And if you haven't chosen the right field, how can you be reasonably assured that you'll get a job when you graduate? And if you don't get a job, how will you be able to pay off your student loan or contribute to your parents who have sacrificed so much to send you here? All critical questions which are made even more pressing in these uncertain times. So what are the answers? Well, here is the answer that most students tend not to believe or appreciate until it is too late. Are you ready for it? Here it is. It is not what you do that matters. What is critical is how you do it. Let me say that again for those of you who missed it. It is not what you do that matters. What is critical is how you do it. For every combination of major, minor, or double major that we offer, we have had graduates who have excelled and who have made the most of their talents, and we have others who have struggled. What's the difference? It's not the course of study that they pursued but rather the extent to which they apply themselves during that course of study. And so my encouragement to you this afternoon, even as I welcome you into the Faculty of Social Sciences, is that you should seek not simply to apply yourself to getting a degree or to graduating in first class honors. All right, it's great. But my encouragement is that you should seek to apply yourself to being aware of and in tune with the deep issues being faced by our country, 
by our governments and businesses, by your community, within our families, even the internal problems that affect the ways that we think. Whatever your chosen discipline is, you need to engage with your lectures and materials with your eyes wide open, seeking to understand, pushing yourself to critique and question the material, and challenging yourself and your lecturers and fellow students to engage in deep discussions as to what can and cannot be applied in our current setting. Students, I challenge you to make your learning experience more than simply a journey of memorization and regurgitation. Your learning experience should be a journey full of discovery and personal growth. If you look at what is happening in the world around us, you'd realize that we are at a critical point in our history as human beings. Whether it is climate change or race relations or economic sustainability or political and international relations or poverty and food security, the world is on a knife's edge. And we need you, our best minds, to be aware and focused, to be preparing yourselves to make meaning con meaningful contributions in your sphere of influence. This is not the time, students, to take the opportunity of tertiary education and to simply take the line of least resistance, or to put on your blinkers and focus only on what you need to do to pass or get an A, or to try to take shortcuts and cheat your way to a degree, or to try to find the easy way out, to stick to your comfort zone and not challenge yourself. This is the time, students, to engage in your university journey as an explorer. The student explorer embraces the thrill of the journey and makes the most of every trip. This student is open to all the experiences that university has to offer. They attend their online classes and tutorials and are actively engaged. They see the counsel of their lecturers and may even challenge them from time to time. This student understands that in order to develop holistically, they need to broaden their horizons. They explore their creativity by investing in their talents and their hobbies. They interact and socialize with the people they encounter along their journey. This type of student gets the full value of their investment in their university education. This is the type of student that employers want because not only will they graduate with a good class of degree, but they will actually have learned. They will have learned not only content, but they will have learned the skills that will make them valuable in the workplace. Thinking skills, analytical skills, problem solving skills, communication skills, soft skills. I'm encouraging each and every one of you, like an explorer, to open up yourself to new and exciting experiences, even though they may be frightening at times. I know that one of the frightening situations that some of you are facing right now is a worry about how you're going to pay your tuition fees, about how you're going to pay by the student loan. Trust me, I can relate to that. When I got accepted into UA, by the skin of my teeth, I must say, my, my mother couldn't afford to pay my tuition fees and my grades didn't merit any scholarships, so I had to get a student loan. And from the moment I signed that loan document for the first year's tuition, I began to worry about how I would pay it off. So you know what I decided at that moment? I decided I would never again pay a cent for my education. And I went from there to complete my BSc, my MSc, my PhD, and I didn't pay another dollar outside of the loan repayment for the first year's tuition. How? I got bursaries and scholarships every step of the way. I'm telling you this now, students, because there are opportunities out there for you to pay the way of, a, a way of excellence for yourself. If you start from now to reach for big, ambitious goals, and if you develop the right habits and take the right path, that will lead to excellence. This academic year has again started in unusual circumstances. The COVID-19 pandemic has necessitated that our courses be offered online, at least for the first semester, and our staff stands ready to provide the academic advice and administrative support needed in this environment. In fact, this year, we have totally revised and improved our academic advising process. And we're proud to roll out our comprehensive academic advising program, which is a five-step process that will give you everything you need to be prepared for your journey with us. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you click on the academic advising section of the FSS website, as we have videos and resources that will definitely help you as you plan your UA life. As I mentioned the website, I'm also very, very happy to announce that we have just in the past couple of weeks launched our brand new FSS website. 
This site was designed with you, our students, in mind. It is easy to navigate, and it has all the information that you could ever want. So as a faculty of social sciences, we have planned for you, and we have put resources in place to help you on your journey. We will best utilize the technology to enhance your experience with us. Remember, however, your learning is your responsibility. You will choose the type of journey that you will have. I encourage you to make the most of this tremendous opportunity. And as you do so, I want to finish up my welcome today by strongly, strongly encouraging you to make integrity the foundation of all that you do. Integrity is a quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. With so much corruption in the public sphere, it seems as if integrity is becoming one of those qualities that everybody speaks about, but no one practices. But that can't and won't be the way of our FSS students. Increasingly, with technology, people are finding new ways to cheat. But also with technology, it's becoming easier and easier to find people out when they have cheated. Employers and investors aren't fools. So as corruption and cheating has become more widespread, they have developed ways and means of figuring out who are honest and who have achieved by the sweat of their brows versus those who are frauds. Students, I'm a warning. Don't ever find yourself having the label of fraud or cheat attached to your name. This is a label that regardless of how sorry you are for what you have done, regardless of how much good you have done since, it is a label, a stain that is very, very stubborn. Many of you, like me, are starting your journey here from very humble circumstances. Either you or your parents or someone else made tremendous sacrifices to give you the opportunity to be here. Your reputation is the only thing of value that you own. Cherish it. Protect it. Build it. Because if you lose it, some people will never give you the chance to regain it. So students, even as I welcome you to our faculty, let me also warn you. In the Faculty of Social Sciences and the University of the West Indies, we have a zero tolerance approach to cheating and ignorance is no excuse. Go and inform yourselves about what cheating constitutes. Ensure that you fully understand what plagiarism is. Don't form the fool and follow others down a path that have led them to being suspended or expelled from this prestigious university. Integrity students, is the hallmark on which your reputation of greatness will be built. Take the high road. Take the high road of discovery and learning. Be intrigued and inspired as you equip yourself to be social scientists ready to tackle the societal issues which will face, which will shape the future of our world. Welcome again to the Faculty of Social Sciences. Thank you. Lord, even I see, even I see, guys. Look at the head tiger in charge. Thank you so much, so much, Prof. Tenant. Your words, as always, are filled with nuggets of wisdom and genuineness. In my son, you don't feel him spirit through the screen. I don't feel him spirit through the screen. Same so saying, a real life, real, real life. Yes. Thank you so much, Prof. Tenant. And listen, the chats are blowing up. I'm seeing my people, Shirley Gittins from St. Lucia, big up yourself. Joan Manor from Nevis, big up yourself. Thank you guys so much. Our local people are coming out. People from St. Catherine, Hanover, Chilani, our tigers are coming out of the woodworks. As usual, we're blowing up, guys. I love it. Share the link. Let this go viral because the FSS people are turning out. We have about 422 viewers right now on YouTube. And hear that? Want to hear those numbers? No, man. We're killing the game. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Listen, just Google us. We're nice. We have another star that's coming up right now. But before that, it's another spot prize time, right? So spot prize number two. Remember the rules for the spot prize are this. You have to write your full name for us to identify you. So if you are at Baby Cutie, at Baby Cutie cannot collect a prize. So you have to have your full name. So spot prize number two question is, listen carefully, what is the color of the faculty and the faculty tree? Name the faculty color. I mean, come on, guys. And the faculty trees. I'm sure it's already in the chat. 
were the first people to write your full name, the faculty color, and the faculty tree. You have to have both answers and your full name to qualify. Now, let me tell you about STARS. You see in the video how we had said so many of um, the region's brightest and beautifulest minds are in our faculty or hail from our faculty have passed through our halls. We have another star come true. And a pe a pair of genuine people. We just like this. You understand me? Our dean is genuine. Professor David Tennant. You see, you see this person coming next now? I call her the Dr. Heather Ricketts. Another star. Just, just Google him. Every time you see a name come up, guys, just Google them. And she will be coming to us with her presentation. She's the dep one of the deputy deans of the Faculty of Social Sciences, Dr. Heather Ricketts, with an overview of the rules and regulations. Just Google her. Google her real quick. Beautiful spirit. Dr. Ricketts, how are you? Over I'm good, to you. Thanks. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite good, thank you. So you're ready for me? Yes, we are. Okay, so let me thank you very much for welcoming me. And I want to join with everybody who has gone before me to welcome all the students, particularly the new and returning students, and all those students from out of Kingston, outside of Kingston and St. Andrew, and the regional and international students. Welcome to the Faculty of Social Sciences at Mona, and thank you for choosing the Faculty of Social Sciences at Mona. So today, what I have to talk to you about are the university's regulations, or I should say the faculty's regulations. So let's go. So welcome again. You will see our tiger right there. This is our mascot. We just uh, embarked on this and accepted our mascot with the values or attributes of strength and courage and determination, dignity, and independence. It's a really rep replication of all that we are as a faculty of social sciences. Students, before I go any further, I just want to say to you that we have, over the last three and a half years, embraced a vision, which we call a REACH vision. REACH, it's the acronym for realizing impact through research, or I should say more um, impact or greater impact through research, exceeding the expectations of you, our students and stakeholders, actively advocating for sustainable, inclusive development, being committed to being caring professionals and harnessing our skills through continuous improvement. This is a vision that we have as a faculty of social sciences and we are working to ensure that every aspect of this vision is realized. So what am I talking to you today about? I'm going to just go through very quickly the structure of the faculty, tell you what the departments are, the categories of students, the teaching structure, our course codes, uh, regulations having to do with um, exemptions and withdrawals and registration, etc. cetera the foundation courses, our degree structure, assessments, the GPA grading scheme, and the award of degrees, a little bit about our honors society, activities and opportunities, sorry, and important things for noting and important departments and sections, which you must know. So I wanna start by saying, make the student handbook your Bible. Uh, the student handbook for 2021-22 is the handbook which will guide your journey. That's all of you new students who are joining us this year, starting your classes in another week. Your handbook will be the 2021-22 handbook. So get to know your handbook. It's available on our brand new redesigned Faculty of Social Sciences website. You go into student resources and you will find the handbook for 2021-22. I have a picture really here of the last two uh, physical copies, the ones that we actually printed 2017-18 and 2018-19, but those are not your handbook. Your handbook is 2021-22. For those of you who are returning students, you know the year you came in, 
And so you are guided by your handbook. So this is a structure of the Faculty of Social Sciences. You met the dean. He spoke just before me. I am the deputy dean. There are three associate deans. There are six heads of departments, schools, institutes, centers. Then we have our academic staff who you will interact with more directly. They teach you the administrative and technical staff who you are going to have to interact with as you try to navigate your faculty and the departments that you are registered within. And then of course the service staff who are critical to ensuring that the environment in which you study uh, is kept safe and kept in good order. So here are the departments, economics, it's headed by Dr. Nadine McLeod Rose, Department of Government headed by Dr. Suzette Horton, we have the Mona School of Business and Management. Its director is Dr. David McBean. The Department of Sociology, Psychology, and Social Work is headed by Dr. Orville Taylor. Many of you may know Dr. Taylor. He is the man in black, the man in the middle, who is on RGR's hotline on a Wednesday. You also have, which is a graduate institute, the Sir Arthur Lewis Institute of Social and Economic Research, which we call Salises for short and it's headed by Professor Aldry Henry Lee. We also have associated with our faculty, the Center for Disability Studies, headed by Senator Dr. Floyd Morris. I believe all of you must know Senator Dr. Floyd Morris. And then we have our Western Jamaica campus in Montego Bay that's affiliated to us or with us, and that's headed by Dr. Patrick Prendergast. So students, the categories of students we look at now. Many of you here are full-time, but a lot of you too will be part-time. I'm not sure how many specially admitted students are on now on the YouTube uh, channel, but we do have specially admitted students with us. So if you are full-time, you are required to study five courses per semester. You are deemed a regular student. Uh, if you are part-time, you are studying three courses per semester. If, however, you want to transfer from part-time to full-time, you will do this having attained a minimum of 24 credits, which means eight courses, and you must have a minimum GPA, cumulative GPA of 2.7. So for transfers, please be aware of the criteria. If you are specially admitted, these are deemed occasional students who are not really in a degree program, but may want to upskill. So if, for example, you're sitting in the public service, um, working in one of the ministries or agencies or departments, or you're in the private sector, wherever you are, and you want to brush up on your research skills, or let's say your statistics skills, you can register for no more than 12 credits or four courses in an academic year. I should go back to say that if you are an exchange student, exchange students are deemed, and they usually come to us as full-time students and are required to do as well, five courses per semester. So what's the structure of teaching for the academic year? Well, an academic year consists of two semesters, and these semesters are 13 weeks each. That's why teaching starts in September for semester one, and it goes all the way to the end of November teaching and then exams begin in December. We do have a summer school and that is optional. It is not called a summer semester. It's a summer school and students who are trying to complete their programs, if they have one or two uh, courses that are outstanding, usually would try to register in summer school to be able to finish up. The regular program, is that we study for three hours per course per week. And those three hours are divided into two hours of lecture and one hour of tutorial. And in terms of the weekend program, for those of you who didn't know, we do have a weekend program where students are taught on a Saturday. So it's only done on a Saturday and they study three courses per semester for two and a half hours per per course, per week. So there is the weekend program. So any of you here 
who might know of somebody who want to come, wants to come to university but doesn't have the time, they might be working full time, please tell them that we have a weekend program that is offered on a Saturday and they could think of signing up through the weekend program. In terms of the course codes and levels, there are three levels at the undergraduate level. Level one, first year, level two, and level three. Levels two and three we refer to as our upper levels. And so let's just look at the course codes associated with the various levels. Pay attention to the numeral or the digit. One, anything that starts with one is level one. Anything that starts with two is level two. And anything that starts with three is level three. So Econ 1005, immediately, level one. Management 2026, level two. Econ 3000, we know that that's level three. Okay, so please pay attention. New students, you are doing level one courses. So all your courses should really start with the numeral one. So the courses are mostly three credits in terms of their weight. Some are six credits, and we're going to come to that very shortly when I talk about one of the foundation courses. Some of the nomenclature which you should be aware of uh, were terms such as prerequisites, antirequisites, core courses, free electives, exemption without credit, exemption with credit, co-curricular courses. Some I have highlighted, antirequisites, the core courses, the free electives, and the exemption with credit. So the antirequisites. Now, antirequisites are courses whose content overlap. Okay, so the content overlaps. So when you are looking at the courses that you must do for your program, those of you in economics, Department of Economics, and the Mona School of Business and Management. Be very careful with this particular course I'm going to point out to you. Econ, E-C-O-N 1005 is the antirequisite for S-O-C-I 1005. The course content is quite similar across the two courses. However, for the departments of economics and the Mona School, sorry, Department of Economics and the Mona School of Business and Management, they want you to take ECON 1005, not SOCI 1005. SOCI 1005 is mostly uh, used and accepted in the Department of Sociology, Psychology, and Social Work and the Department of Government. But I want you to ensure that you check using your handbook. Another course or two courses which overlap are Management 2020 and Econ 2000. Those two are antirequisites. You cannot be registered for both courses. So please ensure that you are following your program requirements in the handbook. When you see the term core courses, it means courses that I must do, you must do. So for this degree, let us say in international relations, there are some stipulated courses which you must do. Those are called core courses and every program you are studying will highlight its core courses. And most core courses are 10 in number because they are deemed courses required for your major and a major is comprised of or consists of 10 courses. If you're studying a minor, those are five courses that you must do. Then you hear about free electives. Free electives are courses which you choose to do because you have an interest in them and you perhaps have the prerequisites for them. So let us say you are doing a degree in sociology. So your major is sociology but you always liked economics. You probably, but you do, you, you, maybe you don't feel confident enough to do a full major in economics, but you always liked economics. You can decide that, okay, let me look at the free electives and see whether I could choose one or two courses in economics. And then you may say, well, maybe I could declare a minor in economics. So you apply, you go online and you apply for your minor and you get approved, and then you go into the program once you are approved. 
But of course, the adding of minors takes place at the end of year one. So new students, we're not talking about adding majors and minors yet, but you can have your eye on them as you look at your free electives. The term exemption without credit refers really to what must be replaced in another course at the same level or above. So for many of you who have CAPE Unit 1 or Unit 2 um, passes at grades 1 to 4, you can in fact apply for exemptions without credit, meaning that you will have to replace that course with another course at the same level or above. I'll tell you a little bit about that maybe in the next slide. Then there is exemption with credit. Well, if you're lucky enough to get exemptions with credit, it means you don't have to replace the course with another course. And then there are co-curricular courses. Only one such co-curricular course is allowed per student, and the curricula, the co-curricular course is worth three credits. In your handbook, again, you will see the list of co-curricular courses, football, athletics, cricket, and you will determine which one. Now, is, you don't, um, please note that these ha have a structure. So if you are doing cricket, you have signed up. There are classes that you must attend. There are games that you will have to play. All of these things will constitute the credits that you will eventually get. Okay, so I told you we'll talk a little bit about exemptions without credit for CAPE subjects. So as I said, the people who are eligible are students with a grade one to four. And some of the courses are listed right here. So let's say you have economics, units one and two, with a pass, either grade one or two or three or four, you are exempt from Econ 1000 and or Econ 1012. If you have done sociology unit one, you get exempted from Soci 1002. If you have accounting unit two, you get a, a, exempted from accounts one, a, ACCT, sorry, 1003. And if you've done pure maths at units one and two, you can be exempted from Econ 1003. Note, as I told you, these are exemptions without credit. So you will have to replace these with another course at level one. So we come to the foundation courses. Now, every degree has foundation courses. And the foundation course is number three in total. There are three foundation courses. For us in the social sciences, our English language foundation course is either FOUN 1013 or FOUN 1019. We say FOUN. So we say FOUN 1013 or FOUN 1019. Note who is eligible to take FOUN 1013 and who is eligible to take FOUN 1019. Now FOUN 1013, the course name is Critical Reading and Writing in the Social Sciences. The prerequisites are a grade one at CSEC English A, so you did English language, you got a one at CSEC. Or at Cape Communication Studies, you got a grade one or a grade two. Or for the English language proficiency test, you got a grade of one, which means that you pass. For those subjects, you will get the to, to do, sorry, for those um, passes, you will be able to do Form 1013. If you don't have that profile, so let's say you have got a two at ELPT, you, and, and you didn't get a one at CSEC English, or you got a three and above at Cape Communication Studies, you have to do Form 1019. Form 1019 is a year long course. It is six credits and it happens over two semesters. I just wanna say that for some of you who have not yet taken the English language profici proficiency test, the ELPT, some of you did it in, in um, earlier this month, but some of you haven't yet got a chance to do it, you will have to do it in December. So you will start signing up around about October, look out for those dates in the emails and so on, you will do it in December. If you get 
to there, you will have to do the FOM 1019. Now, this year, our Board for Undergraduate Studies, which is really our guardian of the integrity of the degrees at the undergraduate level, has said that all students in year one must pass, sit and pass the Foundation English Language course before being allowed to progress into year two. Now that is being, a couple of things are being worked out because for those of you who will have to do FOM 1019 and you will not get a chance to sign up for it now to start in September, we are going to have to arrange what is going to happen there. So don't stress yourselves too much about it yet. We are working out what will happen. But for those of you who have a chance to do FOM 1013, right now you can do it. And those of you who have already taken the ELPT, you've got your, you know that you have to do FOM 1019, you will start it in September. For the others who are waiting on the ELPT in December, we will have to work out what will happen with respect to FOM 1019. The other foundation courses are FOUN 1101 and FOUN 1201. 1101 is Caribbean Civilization. We say Caribbean for short. And the FOUN 1201, Science, Medicine, and Technology in Society, people will call it SciMed Tech. Now, for FOUN 1201, we recommend that for Faculty of Social Sciences students, you take it in semester one. So all of you should be trying to do that course in semester one. Now, there is a foundation, oh, before I go to 1301, let me just say that for found 1101 and 1201, it is possible for you to substitute either one of those courses with a foreign language course at your level of competence. So if you want to replace CaribSiv or SciMed Tech with a foreign language course, you are free to do so, Okay. Now, there is another foundation course, FOUN 1301, Law, Governance, Economy, and Society. That course is not available to us in the social sciences, except for the students in social work. Nobody in economics is supposed to be doing this course. Nobody in Mona School of Business and Management. Nobody in Department of Government. And the only people in the sociology, psychology, and social work department who should take this course are the social work students. The other faculties, they take FOUN 1301. So please remember that. The degree structure. So what's the structure of a degree? A degree has three foundation courses. We talked about FOUN 1013 or 1019. 1101, 1201. So they can be either nine or 12 credits. If you are doing FOUN 1019, because it's year long, you will end up with 12 foundation level credits, foundation course credits. Okay? Level one courses. Now, a level one course, as I said, is any course that starts with the digit one. So remember, you can have SOCI 1002, Econ 1000, Government 10, 10, 1008, and so on and so forth. Accounting 1005 and so forth. Level one courses must be 10 courses, 10 courses. And they include the three foundation courses. So in the level one courses, are the foundation courses. So outside of those three foundation courses, you should be doing seven other courses for your level one. There are 30 credits. So when you're checking up and doing your credit count, ensure that you have a minimum of 10 courses of 30 credits. If you did FOUN 1019, your level one credits will be 33 because FOUN 1019 is six credits but you must have 10 courses, a minimum of 10. At levels two and three, which are our upper level courses, there are 20 courses which you must take between year two and year three. And those 20 courses, because most courses are three credits, would end up to be 60 credits. So you are looking for a total minimum of 90 credits. If you are a student in social work, 
your minimum credits will be 99, not 90. So social work, 99, because you are doing 33 credits at level one. And it, um, if you're doing 1019, it would end up being 36 credits. 33 credits at level two, 33 credits at level three. Now, one thing to note is that there are level zero courses. So some of you have to do, you've got into the Department of Government without having um, CSEC math. And you have been mandated to take GOVT 0100, which is a remedial math course. That is a zero level course. It does not count as level one. For those of you who are in international relations and do not have the requisite Spanish or French competence, competency, and you are required to do the level zero course, either Span 0101, or it could be French zero, whatever, they are not counted as level one. And they are not counted in your 90 credits. So please remember, a major is 10 core courses, as I said earlier, and a minor, five core courses. Students, especially those of you who are returning, the number of emails that I have got from students who think that they are finished, thought that they had finished because they had more than 90 credits. And then I have to be the bearer of the very disappointing news to say, unfortunately, you only have 19 upper level courses or 18 upper level courses. Yes, you have more credits than the 90, but unfortunately, most of those are at level one. And to be able to complete, you must have at least 60 credits at the upper level and a minimum of 30 at level one. So please remember in your counting that you take that in, you bear that in mind. So our assessments and examinations, there are many assessments and examinations. You're going to have a lot of things this year, this semester, we are teaching you online because of COVID, as you know, and we've been doing that for the last year and a half. You're going to have mid-semester stuff in coursework, coursework, final exam, oral exam if you fail or a supplemental. Some of you will ask for exams only and so on and so forth. Let me just tell you very quickly, for those of you who have done the final exam, if you fail and you are kind of wondering why you fail, you can apply for a go through. It is not for students who have passed a course. If you have passed a course, you cannot apply for a go through. Then there are remarks some of you might apply for. And they are, let me let you know that there are time limits for application to the exam section for either a remark or a go-through. Some of you may have to defer the sitting of exams. You might fall ill, unfortunately, or you might have a death in your family, another unfortunate episode, or national duty requires you to be somewhere or special overseas assignment. Your company has sent you overseas on a special assignment you write to ask for a deferral of the sitting of your exam. If you have failed an exam with an F1 failure in the category or within the grade band of 45 to 49, and you have failed no more than two courses and you are in your final year, you are eligible for an oral exam or in the case of Department of Economics, a supplemental exam. For those of you who might have an exams only, it's the same kind of criteria as for oral exams or and if you have a medical excuse. So this is a marking scheme. The marking scheme goes from F, well, A plus all the way down to F3. And I just want you to note that if you fail very badly, you've got between zero and 29, there will be no quality points added to your um, to your, your degree, either your cumulative or your degree GPA, okay? So bad failures really do hurt. They hurt. F1 failures still get you a 1.7 quality point, but notice what F2 and F3 failures do to you. 
So the award of degree, it is based on the grades you attain in the upper level courses, your levels two and three. And you can get a first class honors where your degree GPA is at least 3.6. You can get a second class honors degree either in the upper or lower division. Upper is a GPA of three to 3.59. Lower, 2.5 to 2.99. Or you have a pass degree between two and 2.49. If your GPA, your degree GPA falls below two, we cannot declare it as the faculty. We have to take that case to the board for undergraduate studies for its adjudication. So uh, the exams only, regulations, no, re-exams only. I want you to consult your handbook. And as I started, remember I told you that your handbook is almost going to be like your Bible or if you want to say your recipe, book, whatever it is, something very sacred to you, your handbook will be. So if you, uh, if you uh, qualify for exams only, you would have had to have an F1 failure between 45 and 49 for one or two courses required to complete your degree at the end of your final year. Or you have a certified medical excuse for not having attempted the exam. And when we say certified medical excuse, we mean you go to the health center, you see a doctor there, and that doctor provides you with a medical certificate, which is then communicated to the examination section, and they communicate it to us in the faculty. If you're sick and you're out of, you have not gone to the university's um, health center, you have to see a doctor who gives you a medical certificate, which has to be verified or certified by the health center. Okay, so please remember. Leave of absence, late withdrawal. Now, the reasons for, late, for leave of absence can be financial, it can be work-related, it can be medical or personal. But there is a limit. You cannot have a leave of absence for more than two consecutive academic years or four semesters over the life of your program. And to be eligible for a leave of absence, it only comes after you have completed at least one semester. So if right now, for any reason, God forbid, any reason for those of you who are starting now, and you have to take a leave of absence, something unfortunate has happened, what you need to do is consult with the admissions section and defer your entry request. Defer your entry. For late withdrawals, you would have had to, students would have sat an examination or completed some coursework. So you, for you to, to be eligible for a late withdrawal, you would have had to have sat some part of an exam or completed some coursework for one of your courses or your courses in general. Please note that there are deadlines for applications without penalty. With respect to the regulations for registration, there is a period called add drop. And we are pretty much in that period, you could say, the period in which you can make adjustments to your course selection. So many of you are actually selecting courses right now. It's available at the start of every semester. And for about the first three weeks, you can add, you can drop. Please note that there are deadlines for dropping courses. For late registration, for late adjustment to registration, for retroactive registration, or any late adjustment, there are penalties. Okay, and remember as well that no permission will be given if you want to change your major or your special as in social work or you want to add a major or special in your first year. Permission is not given in your first year. For those who may have to withdraw or who unfortunately may be deregistered, deregistration takes place mostly because of financial reasons. Um, if you are required to withdraw, here is why. You have a GPA less than two in consecutive semesters. So for those of you just starting, if your GPA falls below two in your semester one, you will get a letter of warning. If you go into semester two and you still haven't done very well and your GPA 
ends up being less than two, you will be required to withdraw because these would now be two consecutive semesters where your GPA would be less than two. You would be required to withdraw. Some of you, however, will withdraw voluntarily after completing at least your first semester. And if you are withdrawing, please ensure that you remove your courses. Please do so. There are deadlines for requesting leave of absence and there are deadlines for requesting voluntary withdrawal. There is something called academic forgiveness. For those students who may perform poorly in a program, you withdrew voluntarily or you were asked to withdraw. If you sit out for a year, you can come back in having applied again to the admissions and you can start with a new slate or a new record. Please note that on return, your level one courses can be trans transferred upon request, that is to your new record. Your upper level courses, however, can be considered for transfer by the dean who has to consult with the board for undergraduate studies. And if you are out for five or more years, you may just have to restart your entire program from the beginning. Because we want to ensure the integrity of our degree, and we want to ensure that, remember that degrees are also, some courses, very time sensitive. Let's say you did principles of marketing 15 years ago, and for some reason you, you withdrew, and you're trying to get back in now, and you want to let us, uh, have you transfer the principles of marketing course. Think of how much marketing would have changed between um, today and let us say 2005, thereabout. So you, you would have to do over some courses and you may have to restart the entire program. I'm trying to speed up. Transfers, exchanges, and study abroad. Now, students, you can transfer from one faculty to the next. You can transfer from one campus to the next, and you can study abroad. You can go on an exchange to study abroad. So let's see. So faculty transfers, you can transfer from FST to the FSS. That happens a lot. We see a lot of that from science and technology into social sciences. Some people transfer from Mona to Cavill or from St. Augustine to Mona and so on. If you are Applying for a campus transfer, the application period is January to March, also for the faculty transfer. If you, you, there are also program transfers within a department. You may want to transfer, let us say, from statistics to banking and finance within economics, or from marketing to accounting, and so on. Note, however, that you are not eligible for transfer in your first year, which is your entry year. And approved students will pursue program requirements for the year that the approval was granted. So let us say you were in the Faculty of Social in Science and Technology. You went in in 2020, 2021, which was last year. You have transferred now to us in 2021, 22. You will pursue the program requirements for the year that the approval was granted, which would be this year. There are some of you who will want to go on exchanges and study abroad um, um, opportunities. For those of you who would wish to take, um, to take advantage of that opportunity, you must be full-time. You must have spent at least a year at Mona. Your GPA must be at least three. You must not have, have had any disciplinary charges leveled against you, such as cheating, colluding, etc. And the study abroad opportunity will be for a maximum of two semesters, and it cannot include your final semester. So please note, many people then do their um, exchange or study abroad in year two. You heard a little bit from Tamarine, your Honor Society president, I think. So this is an opportunity for you to do well. If you do very well, you can be inducted into the Honors Society. You would have had to have a cumulative GPA of 3.6 or above 3.6. You would have had to pass Form 1013 or 1019 
and you cannot have failed more than one course. We see our honor society as a potential training ground for you to exemplify the faculty's mission and also to encourage a scholarly culture. Other opportunities are to be on the Dean's list if you have done very well, to enjoy faculty and department prizes and awards, and also to join the clubs and societies. We have a whole list of the clubs and societies on our website and also in the handbook. So important for noting, and I'm wrapping up right now, read your handbook carefully. All of you, read your handbook carefully. Browse our faculty's website. It is brand new, it is user-friendly, easy to navigate, has a whole lot of resources. Know the codes of conduct and your responsibilities. Know the regulations. Seek academic advice. We have a new comprehensive academic advising program, brand new, thanks to Dr. James Bateman, Associate Dean for Undergraduate Matters, and Dr. Michelle Monroe, one of the lecturers. All right, Dr. Akids, I think your screen has, has frozen on us, and that is okay. We have all this wonderful information that is up and running. Dr. Rikits, are you still with us? All right, well, we will have um, this information that is up and ready, guys. I know this is a lot, a lot, a lot of information to take in. And so I know we're all snacking and we're all writing on our notepads that we have there. Dr. Ricky, you're back Sorry with us. about that. My connection went down, as you would imagine. All of us are working from home. And so we are, um, the pressure on the system. Okay, let me, so I think, where, where did I lose you? Right here, important for noting? Yes, yes, sir. yes. Okay, so read the handbook carefully. Browse the website, know the codes of conduct and the responsibilities, know the regulations, seek academic advice. Dr. James Bateman and Dr. Michelle Monroe have done a tremendous amount of work on this new comprehensive academic advising program. Seize opportunities, ensure academic integrity. Students, there is a coursework accountability statement which should accompany all of your coursework submissions. And you were warned, we have a big video which we showed you about academic integrity and the cheating and all of the penalties that will accrue if there is cheating. So this is the academic advising. Begin with the end in mind. You want to come out here of, of your program with an honors degree? You therefore have to understand what you need to do to get there, okay? So your first year does matter. You have to have all your courses. You have to make the semester great and you have to know why you are at you. Not because your mother sent you or your father think you should do this and so on. You have to be here on your own. Also manage your time, know your timetable. And I want to add then, know your lecturers, know where your, um, your, your course codes and your course titles, check your credits. We have a nice um, form which uh, Ms. Pinnock, our senior administrator has formulated for you to help you to check your credits and that's on the website. And then they know also the student services, which we offer, our faculty office and also the departments. And students, let me just remind you of our philosophy of teaching and learning. We want you all to be critical and creative thinkers. We want you to have good interpersonal skills, mm -hmm. right? We want you to be innovative, to be globally aware and grounded in a regional identity. We want you to be socially culturally and environmentally responsible. And we want you to be guided by strong ethical values. This is what we want. And so the philosophy of our teaching and learning is to deliver all of these attributes, to help you to have all of these attributes. 
So important departments, you have to know our faculty office and what we can help you with. The, the admission section, RIS, the libraries, exams, SAS, OSF, OSSD, the International Student Office, and very importantly, the Office of Special Student Services. Yes, um, if, if, the, if you have any sort of disability, don't feel any way in going to the Office of Special Student Services. Let them know that you may need additional support with ABC, they will be happy to assist once the facilities and resources permit. I'm sure that Senator Dr. Morris might mention a little bit about this in his presentation shortly. And then, of course, the health center with all of its services to you, including counseling support. Folks, we are all over social media, so follow us on Instagram, Facebook. Um, LinkedIn, et cetera, et cetera. And if you want to get us, FSS underscore student matters at uimona.edu.jm. And you could take a picture right now of this slide and you have it available, but also on our website available. So all I need to tell you now is best wishes for a successful journey at UWI in the Faculty of Social Sciences. Welcome again. And all the very best to all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ricketts. Thank you so much. All right, guys. I know that was a lot of information to take in. And that's how it goes. But don't worry about it. It will be up and available for you guys to look at at another time. And also remember to follow us at FSSU in Mona. All the information will be there. We have academic advising that will be coming up this week. So make sure you go to all of those things. And I hope, like I had asked you to, you have your little pencil, your little pen and pad, and you're writing down all the information, or you're taking your virtual notes. Um, thank you so much again, Dr. Ricketts. That was a lot of information. I call her one of the great book, big book of everything. Enough knowledge just coming out of all our um, presenters today. So now, remember, we did ask for the spot prize, the number two spot prize, which was what is the faculty's color and tree? Now, you know, <laughs> the blue maho is the national tree of Jamaica. For all my regional people online, when you see all of them talking about the blue maho in the chats, that is actually the national tree of Jamaica. However, that is not the faculty tree. So, Abby Ann McLaren, I hope I got your name right. You were the first person that wrote your full name and had the faculty color, which is the orange. You saw it nice and pretty. And the faculty tree is actually, as Abby Ann said, the flamboyant Ponciana. That is actually the answer. So, Abby Ann McLaren, big up yourself. Thank you so much for that. Now, spot three, spot prize number three, right? Because, you know, so we have a whole prize for you. This is nice. All right. So the spot prize number three, actually, what is the name of the Faculty of Social Sciences Dean and Deputy Dean? Hello, please. Hello, please. We can't make it any easier. All right. So you know the rules, right? Full name. And the names, the full names also of the FSS Dean and Deputy Dean. So we actually have um, a video coming up next, um, academic advising, which uh, Dr. Ricketts alluded to and I alluded to. Then we will have a presentation by Dr. Debbie Ann Chambers, another lovely, lovely, beautiful soul. I like to hear her talk. She's so Genuine. The word of the day is, is integrity and genuine. Those are the two words of the day, followed by Senator Dr. Floyd Morris. I will come back on again just to intro these two. So remember, our spot prize number three question is what is the name of the FSS Dean and Deputy Dean, followed by Dr. Debbie Ann Chambers with the University Counseling Services, followed by Senator Dr. Floyd Morris. So get your water, get your chips and your fruits, and 
stay tuned and stay nice and comfortable. Tigers were all out. My last check, I think we were at 489 views. Almost 500 Tigers coming out of the woodworks. Awesome. So we'll see you in a bit. We'll have the video followed by Dr. Debian Chambers. Dr. Chambers, Dr. Morris, we'll be coming right to you. All right. Tigers, please help me to welcome Dr. Debian Chambers. Dr. Chambers, how are you feeling this afternoon? I'm feeling very good. The vibes here is very nice. I must say, Miss Burns. That is what I want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, Dr. Chambers. Thank you so much. I am going to share a screen, but I just want to say how happy, really, and excited I am to be here presenting to you today. Um, I used to be in the Faculty of Social Sciences at UA Mona, and I was one of the students, if there are any students like me out there, I just want to give you some reassurance. I was one of the students who started not knowing what I wanted to do in the faculty. So if you are in that situation, no feel no way, it will come over time. Just as your dean said, immerse yourself the best way you can. I started the Faculty of Social Sciences with a major in management and a minor in economics. In my second year, I went to a major in management and a minor in psychology. And in my third year, I went to a double major in management and psychology. Obviously, the psychology stuck with me. So again, wherever you're starting at, just know that you'll be okay and you'll find your way. Just kind of see what you like, what speaks to you, um, what ignites your passion as you do the various courses. 
So today I'm going to talk to you about adjusting to university life, balancing academia and life in general, okay? But I want to check in with you and I'd like the faculty to pay attention to whatever you put in the chat. So just put your responses in the chat. What is it like for you to begin your university experience during a pandemic? Whether it's a phrase, an emoji, a sentence, just drop it in the chat and let us know. We need to hear your voices and know what you're going through. And then the second thing is name your needs. It's important for us to recognize what we need and to name it and claim it, right? So what do you need from the faculty to support you in maintaining balance through this transition? So either question or both questions, just drop a line in the chat. I have my phone right beside me. So I look at it from time to time and see that things are coming in already. And there's a lot of stress, a lot of excitement, a lot of nervousness, even some discouragement. So it's okay to just name that and put that out there. Hopefully by the end of this orientation week and as you start, things will begin to shift for you. When I thought of doing this presentation, a quote came to mind. By the way, I love poetry. All of my students know this about me. Um, my staff, Mrs. Tamaya Wilson, is actually online with me now, um, know this about me. And so when I was thinking of you, I thought, what quote would I want to share with them? And this one came to mind. So many years of education, yet nobody taught us how to love ourselves. Let this not be the case for the Faculty of Social Sciences. I'm sure it won't be the case. Here at UWE, we do have dedicated staff members who are here to support you in loving yourself, in caring for yourself, and caring for your mental health. Again, I'm watching the chat. I'm seeing all the needs and the phrases coming in, and that is just great. So I'm going to talk to you about six ways to take care of your mental health while studying, six ways to basically love yourself, keeping that quote in mind. The first thing that I really want us to look at is this. Your programs of study are intense ones. Just no way to get around it. That is it. Things will keep changing through this year because of COVID-19. I am going to tell you the truth. When COVID landed in Jamaica, and after a few months, I realized as soon as I made one decision and one plan, as soon as the staff came together and said, okay, this is what we're going to do, something else happened and we had to pivot. Then we pivoted, something else happened and we had to pivot. So I just realized that this pandemic is about being open to change. So I want you to radically accept that. Wherever you are right now, just take a deep breath. Calm the nervousness and say, I'm going to radically accept that change is going to be part of my experience, especially during this first year. If you see on the screen, radical acceptance really is the ability to accept situations outside of your control without judging them. And that is the key to not judge it, to not go, boy, things just really bad. This is horrible. Um, I'm never going to get through it. Don't judge it. Notice it and accept it because that's what's going to decrease suffering. And it is in accepting things that we can face it. So just say to yourself now, radical acceptance. Radical acceptance doesn't mean you're a doormat. And as you Dean pointed out earlier, you are going to be the social scientist that solve a lot of our issues in society. So it doesn't mean you just become docile and accept and don't push, but we have to accept in order to problem solve and to get through. The second tip, despite the intensity, now this one is very important to me. Despite the intensity of your program, guess what? You are not a machine. You don't need to grind all the time. And that's the truth. And the reality is 
people going to look at you and going to say, well, why not study? You're supposed to be studying 24-7. You're supposed to always have beat book. You're supposed to always stay up. None else supposed to matter to you. You're not supposed to have no friend, no romantic partner, no nothing during this time. And while your education should certainly be a priority, the reality is you're human. And so you need to rest. You must rest. Sometimes when I tell students this, they get panicked. Then Dr. Debbie, how you tell me for rest and we have exam come up? Guess what? When you rest, you're more creative. You're able to think better and you're able to resist. No, the reality is, what does rest look like? If we don't talk about it in society, maybe we can't even name it. Here is a list of some things. It might be, for example, closing your eyes for 10 minutes. Some of you just heard a lot of things about prerequisites and what you must do and what you mustn't do. And this is so important. So maybe after this presentation today, after you come off of YouTube, you're just going to take a deep breath, close your eyes for 10 minutes and be silent. And that's okay. For some of you, it may be a 20 minute nap. Like literally, you know what? I go go to bed for 20 minutes. All right, yes, I know I have to register. Yes, I know I have to figure out the ad drop. Yes, I know I have to figure out this. But you know what? I will take a nap for 20 minutes, get up again, and push through. So remember, despite the intensity, you are allowed to rest. And rest is so very, very important. The third thing. So you're still with me? The third thing. And if you can even just identify one of these things to take with you, that's good. The third thing is you will need good social support. And notice how I highlighted the good, right? Not all support is necessarily good. And how are you going to know? Well, if you're in social circles and people help you to feel more energized, more productive, more clear about who you are and what you want to go and make you feel like, yeah, man, social support is a good thing and you want to reach out to more people, those are signs that you have good support. If there are people around you and you just feel confused, your self-esteem start to go low, you don't feel like do nothing, and you know you say to yourself, better you just not surround yourself with people any at all, those are signs that you're not in good social support. No, the reality is, truth be told, that there are many of us who are shy or, you know, we can be loners. We don't really know how to reach out for support. And I want to acknowledge that. Here at UE, already figure out there are so many people in your department rooting for you. Student rep, faculty advisors, here at the University Counseling Service, clubs, um, your resident advisors on call. There are many people that you can just reach out to and get involved with, ask questions and build that supportive network. So I encourage you to reach out for this sort of support. The next thing, and this is one of my favorite Jamaican scenes. So for regional and international students, I'm going to introduce you to a Jamaican saying, Mout make the talk. Mout make the talk, all right? So listen, you have a right to ask for help. Sometimes I work with students in the university counseling service who, through no fault of their own, just struggle to ask for help because they feel like asking for help is going to show up that they're less than or then don't have it together. But that's not true. That's not true at all. We need to balance the need to appear in control with the need for help and support. It's okay to ask for help. And this is also very important to me. You have a right to speak up if something or somebody bothers you. You do have a right. Don't believe that somehow as a student, you're less than anybody here on campus. We are here because you are here. And I am sure that in the Faculty of Social Sciences, 
The staff want to make sure that you do well and that you're comfortable and that you're in an environment that allows you to achieve your potential. So if something is not going right, identify someone who you can speak to about it. Because here what? Moat make for dark. No, here is another point. It is a good thing to seek mental health care when you need it. I think a lot of things are changing in Jamaica. When I was growing up, when I was um, just entering the university, probably you would have never said, boy, I want to talk to a counselor. But we're at a point now where we recognize that there really is no health without mental health. Where we recognize that we need to eradicate mental health stigma or stigma associated with mental illness. The reality is that one in four, one in four people worldwide will be diagnosed with a mental illness at some point in their life. For us at the University Counseling Service, our students tell us, because we do polls, that they come to us seeking help with depression, anxiety, and stress related to academia. Those are the top three issues. But we deal with a whole host of other issues, including trauma, including first psychotic breaks. We have students who come into university already with a diagnosis of a mental illness, whether it is bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, whatever, and we accompany them, we advocate for them all the way through graduation. I have been honored, honestly honored, to see students who come in struggling with a mental illness or who discover that they have a mental illness while studying, and I have been honored to see them graduate and shine so know that that is definitely possible. And we're here to talk to you if, guess what, you just feel stressed out or you're going through a major life event and you need a confidential space to talk. So it's good to take care of your mental health and to seek mental health care when you need it. But of course, you need to figure out who we are. Like, where do you seek this help from when you need it? All right. So we are a team here at the University of four psychologists and one psychiatrist. And as you can see on your screen, we provide a whole host of services from consultation to individual counseling to psychiatric assessment to waivers for exams when appropriate, right? So when appropriate, if there's a, a mental health issue that is getting in your way, know that you can come to us, reach out to us. We will do an assessment and if appropriate, we'll advocate for you to your faculty. We also have peer support providers who help us to do our work. And so peer support providers are students just like you who know what it's like to be a student at UWE and are trained by us to provide support. There are many ways to reach us. Um, here are some of the ways on screen. We do have a WhatsApp text line now for appointments. We started that during the pandemic. We have a landline that you can call. The number is on your screen. We also have a helps line, really, and it's UE Helps. The number is on your screen, 876-294-0042. And so if you need to speak to a counselor, you can call that line. I should have called out the other numbers, um, forgive me, because I'm thinking um, that people have various abilities or access. So our WhatsApp text line is 876-856-5758. And our landline is 876-970-1948. No, if you feel like I'm somebody who can give you some little advice from time to time, or maybe you like to hear my voice, or you feel like, yeah, man, you really want to get into this mental health thing, guess what? I'm on campus radio. So News Talk 93 FM, 
with host Jermaine, we have a segment called Mental Health and You. It's about 25 minutes. So it starts every first and last Wednesday of the month at 9.35 a.m. And this is really big at the counseling service in terms of our efforts for mental health promotion. And we talk about a whole host of issues on mental health and you from adjusting um, to COVID life, um, managing various developmental issues, struggling with addictions, addictions to substances, addictions to porn. We talk about a whole host of relevant issues. So log on and listen to us because we're happy to provide this type of mental health promotion. Here is something else that's really important for you to know. At the University Counseling Service, we are a safe space. So whoever you are, regardless of your nationality, whether you're a Jamaican student, regional student, international student, regardless of your um, physical or developmental abilities, we do work with um, various offices on campus, regardless of your religious affiliation, regardless of your sexual orientation, regardless of your gender identity. We see a whole host of diverse students from many different um, areas and backgrounds, and we strive to be a very safe space for you. So know that you are safe here. All right, so I said I'd give you six tips, and I went through five. Here is one more thing, and this is so very important. The thoughts in your head are not always correct. Do not always believe them, especially the negative ones. So any thoughts that you're not good enough, that you're not going to make it, that um, because you chose social sciences and not something else, like people in your family think that you should have chosen, means you're not going to do well in life. Don't believe the thoughts in your head, especially the negative ones. And we recognize at the University Counseling Service that people come from various backgrounds, including trauma backgrounds. And trauma tends to make us freeze. It tends to make us have very negative thoughts about ourselves and others. So if you're struggling with these thoughts and you need support to get through it, please don't hesitate to reach out for help. So with that in tow, it's important that you be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. I can't say anything more than that, okay? Treat yourself as you would treat a very dear, dear friend. So given all that I've said, how will you choose to love yourself or to focus on your mental health this year? What is one thing that you've taken from what I said that you say, you know what? I'm going to put that in my pocket and I'm just going to keep it close to my heart for the rest of the year. What is one thing? I'll be looking at the chats and seeing what you decide to hold on to. I'm going to give you a little secret. I'm going to hold on to rest. <laughs> so as much as I preach this to the students, I am going to determine, make a determination this year that even if it's a little 10 minutes and I close my eyes, I am going to rest this year, every day. Find something wonderful, um, restful that I can do. So if you see me on campus and I'm sitting under the tree, if you happen to be on campus, or if you happen to be in the health center and you see me walking around the health center, just know that's Dr. Debbie taking a rest. And if you can give me a halo, you can say hi. I look forward to getting to know you in many different ways. So stop by, say hello, or reach out to us. Thank you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Dr. Debbie.
Now, as we move quickly, quickly through the program, many of you will be familiar with this. Remember, me tell us the faculty of social sciences are be a star. You know? Be a star we have around here now. And I know a lot of you are very familiar with our next presenter. Senator, how are you doing this afternoon? You're muted, you muted, Senator, so unmute for me. Unmute one more time, one more time. No, man, you're still on mute. You're still muted. Let me see. There we go. Live now, live, live. All right, and you're seeing me too? Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. Okay, great, great. Over great. to you. Thank you very much for your excitement that you have created in the faculty. You know, I want the student to understand that the Faculty of Social Sciences is the place to be at at the university. You have chosen the creme de la creme institution of the Caribbean, but within the creme de la creme of the University of the West Indies, the Faculty of the Social Sciences is the place to be. And as you journey over the next couple of years, you will see and realize that what Senator Floyd Morris has said to you is in fact so. I have been associated with the University of the West Indies from 1993 when I went there as a student and now here as the director for the UWI Center for Disability Studies. So I've seen many moons uh, through my time at the University of the West Indies. And trust me, you are going to enjoy every moment of your university life. We just want to get this COVID pandemic out of the way. And then when we get back face to face, then you're going to enjoy every moment of your university experience. That is why we're encouraging you all to make sure that you stay safe during this time of the COVID pandemic. With that said, I'm here to speak to you about the UWI Center for Disability Studies, which was established in 2009 as the institution to lead the charge in terms of creating a more inclusive university and also to advocate for greater inclusion and participation of persons with disabilities in the broader Jamaican and Caribbean society. So our primary mission, our primary goal is to ensure that we drive research, training, public education, and advocacy. So we have been focusing on a number of research, number of training issues, advocacy, and public education for persons with uh, disabilities. And one of the things that we have done as a part of our effort to promote an inclusive and participatory society for persons with disabilities is to establish some academic courses that will allow students to get a first-hand experience in terms of how to relate with persons with disabilities. And this is where we have uh, our, our understanding persons with disabilities, DBSP 1000, Disability Law and Society, DBST 2000, Disability and Development, DBST 3000. These are three academic courses that we have available for uh, students to pursue right across uh, the faculty. These are free electives that you can do uh, DBST 1000 in your first year and in your second year, you can do DBST 2000 and DBST uh, 3000. I must point out that when you become a second or a third year, you, you, you would have to do uh, either DBST 1000 or SOCI 1002 as the prerequisite that that eloquent uh, deputy dean, and I wish she was one of my lecturers when I was an undergraduate, because I just enjoy listening to uh, Dr. Ricketts whenever she speaks. But she spoke to you about the prerequisites and those two prerequisites, either DBST 1000 or SOCI 1002, 
uh, would take you in to uh, uh, DBST 2000 and DBST 3000. I want to point out as well to students with disabilities that are a part of the faculty and might be listening in, that we work closely with the Office for Special Student Services uh, that is located on the campus. It's the only campus that boasts of a specialized facility dedicated for students with disabilities. And you must make sure that once you have a disability, you get registered there so that the university can provide the necessary support for you. We don't want you to only turn up when you have an exam to uh, know that you have a disability. We want you to be able to enjoy the full learning experience at the university. And the only way we can do that is by making sure that you are registered with the Office for Special Student Services. The final thing that I want to say, and I want to return to the subjects, uh, the, the courses that I mentioned earlier, because it is important that students get uh, a knowledge of relating to persons with disabilities, because it is going to prepare you for the work world. The government of Jamaica is currently in the mode of implementing the Disabilities Act. They have stated that in this uh, calendar year, they are going to be uh, enforcing the legislation. And they have tabled the regulation in the parliament and formulated codes of practice uh, for the Disabilities Act. In these codes of practice, the government has put in place provision to make sure that employees establish mechanisms to facilitate the inclusion of persons with disabilities. And they will require staff members that have experience and knowledge of how to relate to persons with disabilities. So if you are going to venture in the healthcare sector, if you are going to be engaging in the manufacturing sector, any one of the sectors of the society, you doing any one of these courses that is offered by the Center for Disability Studies is going to place you at a distinct advantage and so I'm encouraging you and imploring you when you are selecting your free elective to make sure that you do either DBST 1000, DBST 2000, DBST 3000, because it is going to benefit you significantly in the work world. I close and say to you, welcome to the Faculty of Social Sciences. This is the place that allows me as a blind person to own my skill, to allow, that has allowed me to participate as a blind person on a day-to-day -day basis in the decision-making of the faculty of social sciences. And I would be, I would want to be nowhere else in the university, but in the faculty of social sciences under the distinguished leadership of Professor David Tennant. Thank you. Yes, Senator. Yes, Senator. Duly noted and recorded, sir. Thank you so much. Listen, when I say, oh, we are going to work, we are work over here, not, not, not chicken, we are jerk. The, the kids that say that in the streets, guys, I don't have to correct me. I might be a little bit outdated. <laughs> all right, listen, thank you all so much for staying with us, we still have some more to go. I know lots of information. Listen quickly, Romario Mills, you were the first person to give us the correct answer for the number three spot price question, which was what is the name of the FSS Dean and Deputy Dean Romario Mills? Big up yourself. Thank you as we move on through. Now, Quickly, I know we're getting a lot of information. So I want you guys to just tell me what you, 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 you're snacking on. I was snacking on some almonds. I'm sipping some lemon water in my glass here. Come the man, write in the chat. 
tell me what is the brain food that you like to use studying or while you're getting in all of this information share with us drop some fire emojis in the chats drop some tigers in the chats because you know we're like 500 strong or more at this point we're rocking and rolling all right so listen as we move quickly through we are going to have now the career and placement opportunities They'll be just giving us our welcome and send some information that you need to know. And I'll be right back with you to guide you through the program. In the meantime, guys, while we're watching their presentation, tell me what you're snacking on. What's keeping you through this lovely and wonderfully informative session? Let me know. Let me know. Career and placement opportunities. Let's go. The Office of Placement and Career Services. UWI Mona. The department's aim is to assist UWI students in making a smooth transition to the world of work. How does the Office of Placement and Career Services assist students from their first year through to their final year? We assist students by offering services in self-assessment and individual career counseling, career exploration opportunities, job readiness seminars, job search and job referral assistance, internship coordination, resume and cover letter advising and reviews, job interview techniques and coaching, employment compensation package and negotiation advising, facilitating the overseas work and travel program, by way of overseas work and travel agencies and scholarship coordination. Students can benefit from seminars, workshops, resume clinics, career exposition and job fair, mock interviews, contacting the office is easy, we are located upstairs the Office Graduate Studies and Research Unit, 20 Ring Road, UWI Mona. Monday to Friday 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Be aware and plan your career. Hey, now look here, now I love it. I love it because my tigers are out here strong. Listen to me, but I'm doing not. People are out there eat popcorn, red hot. We never know, say red hot still selling out, tell the truth. We never know. Capri Sun, um, Oreos and milk. Uh, <laughs> you're dunking the Oreos in the milk. Ginger tea biscuits, somebody's having air pie. Big up yourself, that's okay too. And water, yeah, man. Um, crystal punch, banana chips, lemon water, <laughs> peanut. Somebody have them Sunday, Monday. Now, for my regional and international people who may not know, when a Jamaican is telling you that they're having Sunday, Monday, that means whatever dinner they cook Sunday. I eat while well, warm up and eat for lunch on Monday. Sometimes we eat it for breakfast. Sometimes we eat for lunch and. If it was enough, we eat it for dinner too. So when you hear a Jamaican say that they're having Sunday, Monday, that is what they're eating. Awesome, awesome. Finally, somebody said fruits and pineapple. May I wonder if up here snacks, snacks we're doing. All right, awesome. I'm loving the vibe. I'm loving the energy, guys. Okay, so we're, we're moving though, you know, we're moving. We're trying to get through this and I know it's a lot to take in. So right before that we have the number four spot prize question them like to give out spot prize here man i've never been to a session where so much spot prize i give away anyway this is awesome so our number four spot prize question is what is the name of the ua principal and campus registrar of the mona campus Put it in the chat. Remember our rules, your full name, the full name of the principal and the campus registrar. This is awesome. First person to write is in the chat. And the people them who, are win, who, who have won so far, I know that you guys have been contacted. So what we will have is the library. Now, listen, guys, if you want to tune out a little bit, get the energy going, because this is going to be very, very important for you to know right mrs o miss audrey sadler are you with us are you with us miss sadler yes i am awesome all right so miss sadler will be coming to us with her presentation over to you miss sadler Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Unfortunately, my video will not start. 
So I will um, just go ahead with my presentation. On behalf of the UEMONA Library, what, we, what I would like to do is to welcome you to the Mona campus and to welcome you to the library. Now, this is going to be a very brief presentation on the resources of the library because it is not going to be possible to go through the gamut of resources and services that the library has to offer, especially in this online environment. I'm going to look briefly at some of our physical resources, our online resources, and some of the services that you would be particularly interested in. At a glance, there is the main library, and we also have a medical library, which is at the hospital, a uh, science and engineering land branch library, which is in um, SciTech. There is a library, a branch library at the Faculty of Law and at the Western Campus Jamaica, we also have a library. So we are serving our students regardless of where they are located. The library has resources which are both print and electronic. And so the print resources for the social sciences are housed at the main library. And this library comprises three floors with computer labs. There's a multifunctional room. We have a West Indies and special collections area, as well as a reprographic services unit, which I'm sure most of you will um, use. Now, we have had to reconfigure all our spaces in adherence to the COVID-19 requirements, and that also has um, impacted our opening hours. These are some of the print resources that we have available to you. As I said before, statistics, econ, commerce, finance, public services, whatever the areas are, we have them covered both in print and electronically. Some of the resources you may need to borrow, and we have made arrangements for those, and I will speak more on that in a little while. For our electronic resources, what we have sought to do is that once the resource is available electronically, we have tried to acquire it. And so we have uh, subscriptions to electronic databases, we have access to ebooks, citation guides, and of course, examination past papers are available via the library. These databases cover all the areas in the social sciences. Articles are downloadable, and some of the ebooks are also, also downloadable. However, some can only be read online. These are some of the databases, the ebooks that you may interact with. So EBSCO, ProQuest, Gale, eBrary, Springerlink, and we also have access to the collections of the University of the West Indies Press. When we look at our electronic databases, I want to highlight Credo. Credo is by far our most popular reference database. And what this database does is that it will provide you with a background information on any area of research that you have to conduct. And this is one of the most useful reference databases. And I'm going to encourage you to make use of Credo. EBSCO is one of our most popular database. It is multidisciplinary. And this is one of the databases that as social science students, you will all use. It has academic search, ultimate Caribbean search, communication and mass media. There is econ lit with full text. And of course, hospitality and tourism complete. And these are some of the other databases such as ProQuest, ABI Inform, Insight, 
regional business news, JSTOR, and Project Muse. Now, the question I'm sure a lot of you are asking, how do we access these resources? Your UAID and that same password that you use to access SAS or your learning environment, you will use it to log on to the library portal. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. And if it is that you need to visit the library to use our curbside services, or you're going to come to the library to use our reprographic services, you also take along your ID with you. I'm just going to link out to the library's website. It has a whole gamut of information that I'm going to encourage you to visit and to look at, but it has what we call UA Link. And UA Link is a portal to all of the libraries within the University of the West Indies. So when we think of UA Link, we're thinking of Mona, Open Campus, Cavill, and St. Augustine. So it is very important that you understand how to use your link and how to filter the searches. And this is where you're going to um, go, not only to find out what physical resources are available in the library collection, but you are also going to use it to access the full text resources. There's a very important feature which is called UA Link, which is called Ask a Librarian. And the Ask a Librarian service allows you to connect with the library in multiple ways. So there is a chat service. Unfortunately, no one is logged on at this point, but we are usually manned from Mondays to Fridays, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., where you can have your questions answered in real time. If it is that we're offline, we will answer your questions as soon as possible. Why is it that you may want to use Ask a Librarian? You may be searching for you may be uh, you may be searching for an article, you cannot find it, or you have found the article, but you cannot access a full text. If you use the Ask a Librarian service, we will find that article for you. And not only will we find it for you, we will send it to you. And so I'm going to encourage you to go to your link to look at the resources that we have to offer and to look at the different ways in which a library can provide assistance. These are some of the other areas that are very critical. Circulation services, where we will lend you books. Now, our doors may be physically closed, but we are still open. And so we have a curbside pickup service. If there's a print resource that you need, send us an email. We will check our systems. Once you do not owe any library fines, you're registered, you're in our system, we will process the transaction. We will package the item for you. And then we will send the email and say, come and collect. We're also aware of the fact that it is not possible for any library to have all the information resources that you're going to need. And so we have interlibrary loans where if you make us aware of your request, we will reach out to other libraries, whether locally, regionally, or internationally, and we will try to pull those resources in and make them available to you. Our reprographic services include printing, scanning, photocopying, laminating, and spiral binding. And there is an email address where you can email Risu, and then you can simply come in, pay, and pick up your job. We will be having a series of library orientation um, sessions next week where we will take you through how to use UELink 
and how to use other aspects of the library. We also have a unique program, which we call Hall of, Re or Hall of Residence Librarian, where each hall has a librarian attached and that librarian works specifically with the first year students to ensure that they are able to navigate and access the resources of the library. Now, this is something that is very critical and I want you to pay attention. On the screen displayed are two citation guides, citation manuals, the Chicago Manual of Style and the publication manual of the American Psychological Association. These are the most two popular citation styles used in the social sciences. Your lecturers will advise you which of them you are to use. The library will have a series of sessions that will introduce you to the citation styles. And so we will take you through how to do your in-text citations and how to create your references. And I'm very sure that you heard about plagiarism and the penalties that may apply. And so you need to understand how is it that you source authors and give them credit for their work. So if you use a, a photograph, you go to the internet and you use a photograph, you use your lecture notes, you go to a blog or a wiki and you use information, you go to a journal article or a book. Once you are using someone else's work, credit must be given. And you cannot escape when you are preparing your papers from using someone else's work. Because those authors you are going to use to set your work in context, either to give it an opposing view or to support your ideas and your thoughts. And one of the best ways to avoid plagiarism is really to understand how is it that you use the tools? How do you summarize? How, how, how do you use a long quotation and a short quotation? What are the pitfalls of over quotations? And so I'm going to encourage you to really listen and to follow the library on the various social media platforms, find out when these sessions are being held and hop on board. Some of the services that we're also offering is that we may scan, edit, and email a book chapter, either the fact to the faculty, if there's something that the entire class needs to use, or to our individual students, but we must always be mindful of the copyright regulations. Now, all our sessions that we teach are on Zoom. We have them Mondays to Saturdays, and we have them in the mornings. We have them in the afternoons as late as six o'clock in the evenings because we want to facilitate all students. There is a tablet loan, a tablet laptop loan project where you are able to borrow a tablet or a laptop for the entire semester. You return it to the library once you have completed your exams. And if you're taking classes in the summer, we can make an arrangement that the loan be extended for that period. So we ask that you contact your faculty, advise them of the need, and they will send us an email. We will process a loan and we will contact you and say, the tablet or laptop is ready. Can you come and collect it at a particular time on a given day? And I'm also very happy to say that we have extended our due dates 
So all of the items that were usually loaned for a day, like our course reserves, we are now making them available for three days. Beginning on the 6th of September, we will be having a series of U-Link sessions, and I'm going to encourage all of you to get on board and to participate in one of these sessions. Your ability to navigate U-Link is going to impact you significantly because it has a wealth of information resource that you are going to need, especially the full text. We also have a plagiarism 101 session which is coming up. And I am also going to encourage you to get on board and to join us. Based on the uptake, we will have these sessions going on other dates outside of what we have advertised. Now, on OU Verily, we have a container which is called UWIML1. I'm going to encourage you to self-enroll. It is free. And in this container, there is a wealth of lab resources that you can use. It speaks to plagiarism. It has videos on all of the different citation tools, et cetera. We also have past U-Link sessions available. So I'm going to encourage you to self-enroll, go through the container, and see how useful it will be for you. And then we also have what we call an orientation libguide. And this orientation libguide will provide you with a virtual tour of the library, what your borrowing privileges are, that is how many books can you borrow, how long can you keep them for. It will provide you with a guide on how to find eBooks, how do you find articles, etc. What are our printing and photocopying costs and our Hall of Librarian um, program, etc. Now, we're on the various social media platforms. One of the most important email addresses that you can um, use for the library is reference.library at uimona.edu.jm. So if you don't take away any of the other, um, anything else from this page, take that email address. So any issue that you have, email us at reference.library at uimona.edu.jm and we will respond to you in a very prompt manner. And I'm going to leave you with this quote that says, a library is not a luxury, but one of the necessities of life. And I'm going to say to you that the library is going to be one of your necessities for the next three years. It is going to make a difference in the quality of your assignments, and it is going to make a difference in the quality of your degree. There is a wealth of information that you have available at your fingertips, but you need to allow us to work with you, to partner with you, to navigate through the next three years. And so once again, on behalf of the library, we welcome you and we look forward to working with you and that your experience at UEMONA will be the better, having met the various persons in the library and having user resources. And so I say thank you very much, and we will meet at a later date. Thank you. All right, all right. Thank you so much, Ms. Sadler. Listen, listen. Every UE student can tell you a story of sitting up in the library's reading room through hours in the morning. Now, unfortunately for right now, some of you won't be experiencing that, but I know as Jamaicans, we're going to get our act together. 
so that you will have that awesome experience. The library cannot, cannot be understated. Listen, when I did hear the part where she said curbside pickup. Now, I never know say curbside pickup a key, but this is awesome, Miss Adler. This is awesome, awesome information. Guys, we're almost at the end. We're about to run into our second to last presentation. Thank you, thank you for staying the day, the afternoon with us, it would seem. So listen, Shari Webb, big up yourself. You are the winner of the fourth spot prize question. Um, and that one was, what is the name of the principal and campus registrar of the Mona campus? Shari Webb, you answered that correctly. So we're going into our spot prize number five. Spot prize when killing out this nice year. Okay, so the spot prize number five question is, listen very carefully and remember our rules, full name, full answers. Now listen, we've had many. However, we're just asking you to name one prime minister of a Caribbean island and one road scholar who are FSS Mona alumni. Very carefully, name one prime minister because there have been many and one Rhodes Scholar who are faculty of social sciences Mona alumni. That is your number five spot prize question. So big up yourself, write that in the chat. We're moving, we're moving, we're getting through. Also, let me take this moment to big up the person who wrote that they're having bacon and waffles for their snack as they watch this presentation. This is a very, very bossy thing and I endorse it. All right, so coming up, we have Mrs. Dwyer Evans and Ms. Lengo from the Department of Language, Linguistics and Philosophy that is over by the Faculty of Arts and Humanities. That was my undergrad faculty. Yes, yes, how are you all? Mrs. Dwyer Evans. And, and Miss Lingo will be carrying us through that. And that is, listen, very, very important because a lot of us have a lot of information that we need to clear. So this is the last big presentation. So guys, listen it up, get your snacks, get one more juice, one more snack, one more fruit, and that let us make it through the home stretch. All right. So this one will be guiding us through understanding the foundation literacy courses that we'll be doing. You hear them talk about phone this and phone that. Now, these are the academic literacy courses, what we may know as English. So we're going to run through that. And then I'll be right back up to wrap up this afternoon. Thank you so much, guys, so much. And remember our number five spot prize question about one Caribbean prime minister and one Rhodes Scholar. All right, see you guys in a bit. We're making it, we're making it, home stretch. We're on the final leg. Welcome to Understanding the Foundation Academic Literacy Courses for your faculty. I am Deidre Dwyer Evans, coordinator of Fountain 13, Critical Reading and Writing in the Social Sciences. And I'm Dijon Lingo, coordinator of Fountain 19, Critical Reading and Writing in the Disciplines. Now you're probably asking, what are courses in academic literacies? Well, these are your foundation writing courses. And the focus really is on reading and writing at the post-secondary level. In addition, you have to engage in thinking, speaking, listening, and viewing in a very critical way. So first, I am going to share with you the particulars of Found 1013, Critical Reading and Writing for the Social Sciences. And then my colleague, Miss Lingo, will tell you some more about Found 1019, Writing in the Disciplines. Now, Critical Reading and Writing for the Social Sciences, Found 1013, is a one-semester writing course that is offered at Mona and at the Western Jamaica campus for students in the Faculty of Social Sciences as well as students pursuing gender and development studies. It is a one semester three credit course that is offered in semesters one and two. Now students are eligible to sit Fountain 13 only if they have received a grade one in CSEC English A or an A in GC O-level 
English, grades one or two in Cape Communication Studies, or the equivalent results outside of the Caribbean region. Alternatively, a one in the English Language Proficiency Test or the ELPT is acceptable. If there is any student who needs to, but has not yet sat the ELPT, the next test will be administered in December. The next test will be administered in December. Please note that all eligible first year students are required to complete Fountain 13 in the first year of study. It is important that you complete Fountain 13 in the first year of study. Let's move on to registration matters. Students are eligible to sit Fountain 13 only if they have received a grade one in CSEC English A, or an A in GCO level English, or grades one or two in Cape Communication Studies, or the equivalent results outside of the Caribbean region. Alternatively, a one in the English language proficiency test to the ELPT is acceptable. If there is any student who needs to, but has not yet sat the ELPT, the next test will be administered in December. Let me repeat that. The next test, ELPT, will be administered in December. Please note that all eligible first year students are required to complete Fountain 1013 in the first year of study. So there is no first year student who is to move on to second year or who can move on to second year unless he or she has completed Found 1013 successfully. Now let's move on to registration matters. In both semesters one and two, students are required to register for a one hour lecture and a two hour seminar. So you register for a one hour lecture as well as a two hour seminar. You must select both in order to be appropriately and fully registered for Fountain 13. If your academic records do not indicate that you have the prerequisite, you will need to request an override. However, there are times when additional information is required before the override can be granted. So it is imperative that you note the exact date on which you sat the ALPT and provide your contact information, an email address and a telephone number in the comment section. You may also need to tell us if you have passed your CSEC at grade one or you have CAPE COM studies at grades one or two because sometimes your records will need updating for that as well. Let's look at how classes are arranged and what happens a little bit in the course. There is no getting around it. Form 1013 will require your commitment, your wholehearted commitment. Apart from your attendance at your lecture and seminar each week, you will need to dedicate another three or four hours Per week to the course. I want you to note that the average pass rate for the course is about 80%. That's not so bad. However, we really, really wish to see more of you getting A. Therefore, attending classes is not optional. Students who do not attend classes as required are at a very high risk of failing. If your class falls on a public holiday or you're unavoidably absent, you are expected to visit another class for the week. So we don't expect you to miss classes unless it is just humanly impossible for you to attend in any given week. Fountain 13 engages your abilities in reading, writing, speaking and thinking, as we said earlier and your active participation is expected. The course is incremental, 
with each lecture informing the seminar to come and the knowledge and skills acquired each week is based on the previous lecture and seminar content and activities. You will be assigned individual and collaborative work in class and outside of class. Please note that collaborative work is non-negotiable. No student will be allowed to complete any collaborative assignment on his or her own. Please spread the word. No student will be allowed to complete any collaborative assignment on his or her own. Therefore, be prepared to do several things. Be prepared to reflect on your reading and writing experiences, to engage in critical analysis of academic writing, to conduct research, be prepared to summarize, paraphrase, and synthesize ideas, to engage in the writing process, to self-evaluate. Be prepared also to evaluate your peers, to critique them. Be prepared to cite information correctly, to write collaboratively. Be prepared to use precise and accurate oral and written language. Be prepared to make presentations, to consult with your facilitators in class and outside of class regularly. Be prepared to use technology effectively. And you cannot forget this one. You must be prepared to manage your time effectively, among other things. But more than anything, I need you to be prepared to begin your journey into true education. If education, according to Harris 1994, is to have any meaning beyond the purpose of creating well-informed dunces, it must elicit from the pupil, that's you, what is latent in every human being, again, that's you. The rules of reason, the inner knowledge of what is proper for men to be and do, the ability to sift evidence and come to conclusions that can generally be agreed to by all open minds and warm hearts. Found 1013 is just just one element of your preparation to not merely excelling at the UE, but to be thoroughly furnished to accept your role in the dynamic world of work to come and nation building. I wish for all Fountain 13 students a rewarding academic year and your facilitators and I are so eager to interact with you. I hope you believe that. It is true. Remember, you may contact me at d-e-i-d-r-e-a dot d-w-y-e-r at u-w-i mona dot e-d-u. My consultation hours will be on Tuesdays between 3.30 and 5.30 p.m. in room two on the Roy Auger building in the Faculty of Humanities when we are able to meet face to face. But in the meantime, we will meet online you can, you can find me on Tuesdays between 3.30 and 5.30 p.m. for consultation if you need clarification on anything. You may also send me an email at any time and I'll be happy to respond to you. Thank you. I'll now pass you over to my colleague, Ms. Lingo for Fountain 90. Critical reading and writing in the disciplines or Fountain 19 is a year-long writing course that is offered at the Mona and Western Jamaica campus. A student is eligible for Fountain 19 if, if he or she receives a 2 in the English Language Proficiency Test or ELPT. Students who have not sat the ELPT are not eligible for Fountain 19. Let me repeat that. Students who have not sat the ELPT are not eligible for Fountain 19. The ELPT is usually administered four times per year, January, April, August, and December, so you have ample time to do the test. 
Please note that all eligible first year students are required to complete Fountain 19 in the first year of their study. So that's very important. Now let's discuss registration matters. In semester one, because Fountain 19 is slightly different from the other writing courses, in semester one, students are required to register for a one-hour lab and a two-hour seminar. In semester two, students are required to register for a one-hour lecture and a two-hour seminar. You must select both in order to be appropriately and fully registered for Form 1090. Please note also that this course also requires lecturer approval. So, students are required to request an override after selecting a seminar and a lab in semester one or a lecture and a seminar in semester two. Sometimes, additional information is required before the override can be granted. So, it is imperative that you note one, the exact date on which you set at the ELPT, and two, it's important to provide your contact information, an email address and a telephone number in the comments section so we can contact you. Students will only receive the six credits for Fountain 19 after completion of both semesters one and two. Please note that carefully. Once you have satisfactorily completed Fountain 19, then you would have satisfied the requirements for the foundation writing course. Fair complete. So now let's discuss why Fountain 19 is such a fun course. So Fountain 19 requires commitment and a focused mind. Isn't that wonderful? Students need to dedicate at least three to four hours weekly to this course. Please note also that the average pass rate for the course is about 70%. However, as scholars in training, we wish to see more of you getting A's. Please remember also that attending classes is not optional. And as scholars in training, you should want to attend classes. Students who do not attend classes as required are at a very high risk of failing, and failure is not an option. If your class falls on a public holiday or you are unav unavoidably absent, you are expected to visit another class for the week. Remember, a part of being a good scholar in training is communication. Always communicate if something is happening. It's important to do that. Fountain 19 also engages your abilities in reading, writing, speaking, and thinking, and your active participation is expected. You will be assigned individual and collaborative work in class and outside of class. Again, you are scholars in training, so this should be second nature for you. Please note also that collaborative work is non-negotiable. Let me repeat that. Collaborative work is non-negotiable. No student will be allowed to complete any collaborative assignment on his or her own. As we would say in Jamaica, it can't work. Therefore, be prepared to, most importantly, manage your time effectively. Time management is critical for Fountain 19. And Notice it's called critical reading and writing. So time management is critical. You will also be required to reflect on your reading and writing experiences. Also be prepared to engage in critical analysis of academic writing. Be prepared to conduct research, to summarize, paraphrase, and synthesize ideas. Be prepared to self-evaluate, to make presentations, presentations to critique your peers. Be prepared to work collaboratively. Teamwork makes the dream work. Be prepared to write multiple drafts. Writing is a process. 
be prepared to cite information correctly. It is very important for us to acknowledge the sources that we use. Be prepared to write with clarity and accuracy. And also, on a regular basis, you will be required to consult with your facilitators in and outside of class. Use technology effectively. And, and there are other dynamic skills that you will also learn as you chart this journey of Fountain 90. So finally, I wish for all Fountain 19 students a rewarding academic year and your facilitators and I are eager to interact with you. Remember, you may contact me at dejon.lingo02 at uwimona.edu.jm. My consultation hours will be on Wednesdays between 3 and 5 p.m. In room, two, in room two on the Roy Ogier building in the Faculty of Humanities. But with these circumstances right now, we will be meeting online in BBC. So, in the words of Zig Ziglar, your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. And Lou Holtz reminds us that, that ability is what you're capable of doing Motivation determines what you do, and attitude determines how well you do it. So, as scholars in training, we expect you to always question, to have an inquiring mind, and to always persevere. Remember, excellence is the standard for which you are aiming, and that's the standard of the illustrious University of the West Indies. We wish you all the best, and we look forward to seeing you in the upcoming semester. On the air, all them pronounce words. On the air, when them say prepared and pupil and illustrious. Yes, sir. Welcome to the University of the West Indies, Faculty of Social Sciences, Tigers. Yes, yes. Um, thank you so much, Mrs. Dwyer Evans and Miss Liga for that wonderfully informative presentation. And ask any FSS student, you know, 1013 and 1019, they're here for you. Yes, yes. That is all I'm going to say about Crit. Hey, welcome to you. All right, guys. Thank you so much for spending the afternoon with us. We are at the end of the program. We have one official presentation left, the launch or the relaunch of our faculty mascot. Now, I don't think I need to tell you what the faculty mascot is, right? I also want to big up Ms. Rhea Lawrence, who is the winner of our number five spot prize question. Name one prime minister of a Caribbean island and one Rhodes scholar who are FSS alumni. She came in with, uh, let me get it for you because she was on point with it. It was the uh, Honorable Andrew Holness and Trevor Monroe. Now we have a holy pandemic now, and I don't think when I realize when I tell you that I'll be a star run through FSS Mona. Let me tell you. So we had other things like the Honorable Keith Rollo, who is the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Trevor Monroe, Stephen Vassiani, and Sharona Forrester, among others. So, yes, big up ourselves. So we are going to enjoy this launch that we see here. And I will be back for the closing remarks. Listen, I am so happy and thankful that you joined us. And so many of you are still with us. Drop a tiger emoji, drop a fire emoji, because we are about to launch the faculty mascot. And so I'm looking big and bad, I mean, around me. Yeah, Rrr. no lines. Uh, tigers don't go. Rrr. Forget it, forget it, forget it. All right, over to you, over to you. Let's watch this wonderful launch. Is it a coincidence that of all the options that were presented to members of our faculty, the majority chose a tiger as our mascot representative? On the surface, the choice of the tiger may appear to be obvious. 
as the colors of its fur, orange, black and brown, are synonymous with the faculties orange and black. On the other hand, the choice of a tiger may have been an unconscious calling, in that as we delve further into our understanding of the symbolic meaning of the tiger, we learn that this species represents strength, courage, determination, dignity and independence. Yes, this species represents strength, courage, determination, dignity and independence. A replica of what we as members in the Faculty of Social Sciences have been trying to practice for years and even despite this pandemic. Although the years 2020 and 2021 have brought some challenges and disruptions to our normal lives, it has also brought some unique opportunities. Unknowingly, we seem to have been operating through our tiger spirit. Using our tiger spirit, we have been transforming our strong emotions, such as fear, confusion and anger, into wisdom. We have risen above and have come to the realization that not only can we manage courageously, but we can become better versions of ourselves. With the strength of a tiger or tigress, we will complete 2021 with faculty pride and integrity, while harnessing our mental and physical strengths. Being the powerful, potent, marvelous beings that we are, we will lean on, encourage and empower each other. Irrespective of the challenges that lie ahead, we know that we can find the willpower to overcome them. FSS Tigers and Tigresses, though this 2020-21 journey has been long, we hope to rest at the end of the semester, knowing that we will need to conserve on our energies and choose wisely how we will expend them as we press on through this academic year. In silence and solitude, and free from any distractions, we must reflect on the year, introspect, and stealthily continue our charge into 2021 with ongoing insights, inspirations, and goals. FSS Tigresses. Tigers. This academic, academic year and beyond, beyond, we are roll with it. Hey, listen, listen now. <laughs> when I kill me with the tiger there without a chat, I love it. I love it. I love it. Listen, thanks guys so much for staying with us. So one last spot prize question for those of us with the keen ears. I want you to name or list three characteristics of the FSS tiger they were just mentioned we're wrapping up so by the time i give my closing remarks the answer should be there so i want to big up my people now listen guys it was an awesome awesome time with you guys you guys were participative you engaged you listened i know that you wrote lots of notes on your Phones and iPads, somebody tell me earlier, said they must think semi real all because me a table pen and pencil. What is a pen? What is a pencil? What is paper? Listen. So listen, as we do close out, I want to leave you guys with some reminders, right? So I want you to make sure that you check the orientation schedule. All new students would have gotten this in their package, right? See where your particular departments, where and when your departments are meeting for academic advising. Here it is up on the screen, but you guys should have it in your email. Listen, complete the orientation checklist that can be found on the faculty's website to ensure that you have not missed out any important step or activity. I can tell you that you will have lots of questions and many of the times, a lot of your questions have already been answered in these many formats. So save yourself time and energy, save us the time and energy, look through these things. The faculty has suspended walk-ins or in-person service due to our pandemic that is going on. It is until further notice. As soon as we get this under control, we would love to see you. But until then, we have suspended all of those things. Students are being asked to use the communication channels. YouTube at, at YouTube is at Uemona Media, I believe. All our handles for Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at FSS Uemona. 
all of them will be there. Remember to follow and like so you get the information going through you. Listen, everybody was assigned a MyMona email. This is the number one way in which your lecturers will be, and the school will be communicating with you. Get a habit, check it daily, twice daily, one time in the morning, one time in the night, just in case, you know, let it be a big part of you. Um, and ensure that you all have your devices for class, stable devices. Remember the librarian told us that there is a loaner device um, program that you can, some people have already started to sign up for. This is an awesome initiative by the UA that I fully encourage those of us who are having issues with our devices, get to places where you can have fairly stable internet. We know it goes on and off for most of us. We can't help that, right? And I want you to do that. So now listen, listen. I love it. And there's, there were so many correct answers. But again, it looks like Rhea Lawrence. I don't know if she can get to. <laughs> so I might have to give it to the second person, right? Who came up with all of the correct characteristics of the FSS a mascot, the social sciences tiger. Listen, Dean, we have a name for the tiger. I think we need to name him something. And it needs to be like a Jamaican name. Brenna Tides, something like that. I like it, you know, I like it. So listen, big up everybody for really coming through so many correct answers in the chat. I want to big up um, Alison Wedderburn, who was the head of the planning committee for this. All other members of the planning committee, Ms. Stephanie Pigger, Ms. Keisha Gay Williams. Um, listen, we have the Dean, David Tennant, the Deputy Dean, Dr. Heather Ricketts, not to single them out, so many um, other people that came and engaged with us and presented with us today. We are so very thankful, but most of all, we are thankful for you. We're thankful that you came and you engaged. Quickly, news in, news in, Dejeuner English. You were the second person noted with the correct answer. We will be in contact. Thank you so much. Big up yourself, Dejeuner. Again, thank you, guys. Thank you, the new official FSS Tigers. We are a strong and proud faculty. I know you will be joining us with your love and your energy. It will be uh, an interesting time for us. It will take lots of uh, flexibility. This online world can sometimes be a bit overwhelming, but let us stay the course. Let us get ourselves together. And hey, listen, it's happening. We hear things so arena full up. I like it. Vaccination blitz up one. Sanitizing is happening. Masking up is happening. Social distancing, all those things still are key because you know why? We want to do this thing in person next year and we want to be able to engage with you, our lovely, lovely tigers, in class as soon as is possible. So let us help as a faculty, let us lead the charge for UE, getting UE back in the state that we all want it to be. Um, let us lead a chart for our generation and for our country. Sanitize, mask up vaccinate let us social distance right turn on your yard when them say we turn on your yard that's stay at home for those of us who are not quite proficient in the patois quite as yet i thank you so much the planning committee you are awesome as usual i just want to thank everybody for coming out with us today clap on yourself i want to some clap emojis in the chat all our prize winners, thank you for engaging. It was an absolutely awesome time. And it has been my honor to be your host this afternoon. Guys, big up on yourself. Tigers, welcome. We stand up strong and we stand up proud. Big up on yourself.